It takes guts to drive a bulldozer, but in some cases, it takes luck to survive it. Over the years, many bulldozer features have become infamous for taking lives as easily as they carved earth, like this bulldozer that tumbled down a hill like it was chasing its own shadow, starting with the Monster Dozer. 1. Caterpillar D11R – When Power Outruns Brakes The Caterpillar D11R was never just a bulldozer. It was a monster with a steel blade and a bad temper. 900 horsepower twin turbos and your blade so wide it looked like it could scoop up a house. But there was one tiny problem. Once it started moving, sometimes it didn't stop. Ask anyone who's driven one in a quarry or a mine, and they'll tell you the same thing. The D11R could run away on you. You'd start down a slope, tap the brakes, and realize those brakes were begging for mercy. They'd overheat, fade, and before you knew it, you were riding a 120-ton sled straight down a hill. There's a story from a quarry in Australia where one of these beasts lost its brakes on descent, smashed through a safety berm, and nosedived into a gravel pit. The operator survived, but only because the cab stayed mostly intact. The dozer? Not so much. The steering wasn't much better. The hydraulic controls had a mind of their own, a delay just long enough to make your stomach drop. You'd try to turn, and the machine would think about it for a second before deciding if it felt like cooperating. On wet clay, that delay could spin you sideways, blade first into trouble. Operators used to joke that driving a D11R wasn't operating a machine. It was holding on and hoping it behaved. Caterpillar eventually fixed the newer models, upgrading the hydraulics and cooling. But the D11R kept its reputation. Too much strength is not enough sense. If you thought that was bad, wait till you see the next bulldozer battle. 2. The Battle of the Bulldozers – China's Real-Life Dozer War In April 2016, the quiet streets of Xingtang County in Hebei, China, turned into a full-blown machine war. Locals heard the roaring of engines, the grinding of steel, and then saw something no one could believe – a duo of heavy machinery ramming into each other like mechanical bulls. It all started with two rival companies fighting over a construction contract. Instead of lawyers, they brought well loaders. Both sides rolled in with their fleets, Lovol and Liugong wheel loaders, and when tempers snapped, the operators went straight for each other. One machine was knocked clean off its wheels, landing hard on its side while the others kept brawling. Police eventually showed up, but by then, the damage was done. Technically, they weren't pure bulldozers, but wheel loaders, construction machines built for heavy lifting, not combat. But that day, they became tanks on wheels. Next up, a supersized Komatsu that proved even too much power can be its own downfall. 3. Komatsu D575A – The giant that sank in its own weight – if there was ever a bulldozer that looked like it could move a mountain, it was this one. The Komatsu D575A was billed as the biggest, baddest dozer ever built. A 150-ton slab of steel with a blade that could scoop up a swimming pool's worth of dirt in one push. When it rolled onto a site, everything else looked like a toy. Operators used to say the ground trembled before it even started moving, and honestly, it wasn't an exaggeration. But the problem with building a monster is figuring out how to control it. The D575A was so heavy that the ground beneath it often gave way. On soft soil, the treads would sink like it was stepping into wet cement. On mining slopes, the center of gravity worked against it, making every tilt a potential disaster. In one well-documented case in Indonesia, an operator watched helplessly as the machine slid sideways down an embankment, too massive to stop or steer. It didn't crash so much as slowly bury itself until the entire undercarriage disappeared. Getting it out took cranes, cables, and three other dozers and that wasn't just the to only dig around issue. it. And that wasn't the only issue. Its 1,150-horsepower 1, engine could churn through over 1,000 gallons of fuel in a single shift. The cooling system struggled under the load, overheating under tropical heat or thick dust. Breakdowns became routine, and parts were so enormous that maintenance crews needed special hoists just to change filters. Komatsu engineers eventually admitted that while it could move the most dirt on Earth, it wasn't meant for most Earth to begin with. But the next machine proved you don't have to be huge to be dangerous. 4. Shantui SD90 – The Clone That Couldn't Cope When China's Shantui rolled out the SD90, it was supposed to be the country's answer to the global bulldozer giants. The pitch was simple, same power as a Caterpillar or Komatsu, but at a fraction of the price. And at first glance, it looked impressive – tall, wide, and built like a tank. Crews across Asia started calling it the budget beast, but it didn't take long before operators realized it wasn't a beast at all. It was a copy that couldn't keep up with what it tried to imitate. The SD90's problems started from the inside. Its massive 900-horsepower engine looked good on paper, but it wasn't matched with proper cooling or transmission strength. Under pressure, the gearbox would overheat and seize. 
Hydraulic lines leaked constantly, and seals failed faster than they could be replaced. Operators joked that you could tell where a Shantui had worked by the puddle trail it left behind. Even worse, its electronics were unreliable. Sensors glitched mid-operation, causing the dozer to jerk or lose blade control without warning. On rough ground, that wasn't just annoying, it was dangerous. Then came the structure issues. The frame welds weren't as solid as they looked, and repeated heavy pushes caused cracks near the pivot points. In a few notorious cases, the entire blade mount warped under stress, making the machine useless until it was stripped down and rewelded. For companies that tried saving money by buying one, it ended up costing more in downtime than a brand new Caterpillar. Eventually, operators stopped calling it the Budget Beast and started calling it the Breakdown Special. Next up, a machine that snaps its own spine under pressure. 5. International Harvester TD-25, the beast that broke its own spine Back in the 1960s, if you showed up to a job site with an International Harvester TD-25, people moved out of your way. It was huge, loud, and built with that old-school American confidence. A crawler dozer that promised to outpush anything else on the lot. Its 12-cylinder Cummins engine gave it a deep, booming rumble that made operators feel unstoppable. But that confidence didn't last. Under all that power was a fatal flaw that earned the TD-25 a darker reputation. It could literally crack itself in half. The problem came from its frame design. The TD-25's torque converter was strong enough to move mountains, but the rest of the chassis wasn't built to handle the twisting force. On uneven terrain or during hard turns, the rear frame would flex so violently that welds snapped clean through. Operators described feeling the whole dozer pop beneath them like the spine of a giant creature giving way. Once that happened, the alignment was done for. You could weld it, brace it, or patch it, but it would never push straight again. Add to that the clutch issues and oil leaks that plagued early models, and you had a machine that could work miracles one day and destroy itself the next. Some mining crews even kept spare TD-25 frames lying around just to rebuild the ones that folded under load. It wasn't just a maintenance problem, it was a safety nightmare. If you were climbing a slope and the frame buckled, the entire dozer could twist sideways and roll. Even though International Harvester tried fixing it in later versions, the damage to its reputation was done. But the next machine took things to a whole new level after breaking down from its hydraulics. 6. Hitachi ZX870LCR – The Hydraulic Nightmare If there was ever a machine that could give mechanics nightmares, this was it. It's not a dozer but one of the world's most powerful hydraulic excavators. It looked like a dream on paper, a massive excavator meant for mining and deep earthwork, with precision hydraulics and the reliability Japan was famous for. But in real life, it was a ticking time bomb of fluid leaks, blown seals, and endless downtime. Operators started calling it the leaker, and once you see what it put crews through, you'll understand why. Hydraulics were supposed to be its superpower, fast, smooth, and efficient. Instead, they turned into its biggest curse. The pressure system was so tightly tuned that a small air bubble or worn seal could send the whole circuit into chaos. Hoses would burst without warning, spraying hot hydraulic oil across the site. Mechanics had to keep rolls of rags on hand just to clean up the constant mess. Even worse, those leaks meant one thing, loss of power. In the middle of a dig, the boom could suddenly freeze mid-air, leaving tons of material dangling dangerously over the trench. It wasn't just a one-off problem either. In hot, dusty regions like the Middle East and Southeast Asia, entire fleets went down from hydraulic failure. Dust clogged filters, seals expanded in the heat, and the pumps started to grind themselves to death. Every repair meant draining hundreds of liters of oil, replacing multiple hoses, and praying the next shift would last longer than a few hours. The cabin didn't help either. Hitachi designed it for comfort, but once the hydraulic fluid started leaking into the vents, operators joked that it was like working inside a sauna that smelled like engine oil. After enough breakdowns, many companies switched brands altogether. And speaking of fragile machines, the next machine showed what happens when size and strength destroy. 7. Letourneau L2350 – The Wheel Loader That Ate Its Gears Alive When the Letourneau L2350 rolled onto a mining site for the first time, people stopped what they were doing just to watch. It wasn't a dozer, but the world's largest wheel loader. It was a moving building, really. Over 250 tons of steel, a bucket big enough to swallow a pickup truck, and tires taller than a man. But for all that size, the IT had one massive flaw. It was too powerful for its own drivetrain. The issue was its gear system. Two enormous diesel engines fed torque into a transmission that simply wasn't built to handle that kind of punishment long term. 
After a few months of hard use, gears began grinding, bearings shattered, and the machine started eating itself from the inside out. Each repair cost more than most smaller loaders combined, and downtime wasn't measured in hours, it was measured in weeks. Mechanics had to remove entire assemblies just to replace a single worn gear, and every fix revealed more damage hidden underneath. And then came the overheating. The hydraulic cooling systems couldn't keep up with the heat generated during long pushes, especially in open pit mines. The L2350 would run strong for an hour, then overheat, seize, and force a total shutdown. Crews joked that it worked as long as a lunch break. Even worse, once it stopped, it took nearly a full day to cool and restart without risking another failure. Despite all this, operators loved the power. When it was working, it could move nearly 70 tons in one scoop. The problem was, it just didn't work often enough. Between the blown gears, leaking hydraulics, and constant overheating, it turned into one of the most expensive headaches in mining history. But while this beast failed from within, the next one failed from something far simpler. 8. Mitsubishi BD-2G, the dozer that overturns at a glance. The Mitsubishi looked harmless, a small nimble crawler meant for farms, landscaping, and light construction. It was compact, fuel-efficient, and simple enough for first-time operators to handle. On paper, it seemed like the perfect entry-level dozer, but in practice, it had one terrifying problem. It couldn't stay upright. The BD-2G had a narrow track base and a short wheelbase, which gave it great maneuverability but almost no stability. On flat ground, it was fine. The second you pointed it toward a slope or mound, though, things got dangerous fast. A small misjudgment in angle or a sudden turn could send the entire dozer tipping like a toy truck. Operators called it the teacup dozer because once it started leaning, it just kept going. Accidents started showing up everywhere. Machines rolled into trenches, flipped sideways on loose soil, and even tumbled off transport ramps during loading. One contractor recalled watching it slide sideways down a muddy incline, blade first, before rolling onto its back like a beetle. The operator crawled out, shaken but alive. Others weren't as lucky. The cab protection was minimal, and without a proper rollover structure, the BD-2G earned a reputation as a hazard in disguise. Mitsubishi tried making small adjustments in later runs, wider tracks, a slightly lower center of gravity, but the problem never fully disappeared. Its light weight meant it simply didn't grip the ground like heavier crawlers, and once that traction was gone, gravity did the rest. As bad as that was, the next machine couldn't keep its footing. 9. Dresser TD-40B – The Heavyweight That Couldn't Hold Its Ground The Dresser was America's answer to the Komatsu and Caterpillar dominance of the 1980s, a brute force crawler that looked like it could chew through granite and keep going. With over 500 horsepower, a massive frame, and that square industrial design that screamed old-school muscle, it had everything you'd expect from a heavy-duty dozer. But when it finally hit real job sites, it quickly earned a reputation for something no one expected. It couldn't stay working for long. The hydraulics were the first problem. They leaked, stalled, and overheated so often that some operators carried spare fluid cans in the cab. It was a running joke. If the ground isn't wet, the dresser hasn't started yet. The hydraulic pumps were notorious for losing pressure mid-push, making the blade drop suddenly or lift unevenly. Nothing destroys an operator's confidence faster than a 40-ton machine that decides it's done working halfway through a job. Then there was the clutch system. The TD-40B's steering clutch was built tough, but it had a nasty habit of slipping under stress. On steep or loose terrain, that meant losing traction entirely. You could be pushing a full load of dirt one second and spinning in place the next. Some operators described it as driving a bulldozer on ice. Add in poor cab insulation, unbearable vibration, and the kind of noise that left your ears ringing after a shift, and the TD-40B turned into more punishment than progress. Even seasoned crews avoided them whenever possible, preferring older caterpillars that at least stayed predictable. In time, Dresser faded from the heavy machinery scene altogether, and the TD-40B became a reminder of why brute strength isn't everything. It looked unstoppable, but once it started working, the ground always seemed to win the fight. Next up, this so-called smart dozer proved that intelligence can be dangerous. 10. Komatsu D-155 AX-8 – The Smart Dozer That Outsmarted Itself When Komatsu launched the D-155 AX-8, it was supposed to be the future of bulldozing, a fully intelligent crawler with automated blade control, GPS guidance, and load sensors that could supposedly do half the operator's job. It looked sleek, ran quiet, and promised to push more dirt with less effort. The marketing made it sound like a dream, 
smart, dozing at its finest. But for many crews, that dream turned into a nightmare when the machine's brain decided to stop listening to the human behind the wheel. The D-155AX8's biggest flaw wasn't in its engine or hydraulics, it was in its software. The integrated control system was meant to automatically adjust the blade angle, engine load, and track speed for maximum efficiency. But out in the dirt, sensors failed, GPS signals dropped, and the whole system would freeze mid-operation. The dozer could lock up entirely, forcing the operator to reboot it like a stubborn laptop. Worse, when it malfunctioned mid-push, the automatic load control sometimes overcorrected, dropping the blade too deep and bogging the entire machine down in seconds. Then came the sensor glitches. Some units started reporting false errors, triggering alarms that shut down key hydraulics even when nothing was wrong. Operators learned to keep one hand on the ignition and the other on the override switch, just to keep it running. And since most repair techs needed laptops and factory software to reset the onboard systems, downtime became inevitable. You couldn't just fix it with a wrench anymore, you needed an IT department. Old-school dozer operators hated it. Komatsu eventually patched the software, but the damage to its reputation stuck. For a machine that was supposed to make bulldozing smarter, it ended up reminding everyone why humans still belong in the cab. Which of these bulldozer features do you find the most terrifying? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, take a second to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.